Hello everyone, welcome to Fix This House. I am DIY Don and together we're going to take do it yourself and turn it into did it yourself. Today's project is we are going to install together a, to a recessed in the wall toilet paper dispenser. Now I'll give you the story, after we recently redid this bathroom and it turned out so very nice and was a great upgrade for us, we thought let's get one of those fancy freestanding movable toilet paper dispensers on a pedestal. You see that guy there? Well what we've discovered is because this is just a small bathroom the thing's always in the way. I also discovered that it's kind of a piece of junk. It looks kind of nice but you know what? It's all metal except for this part. This part is just cheap plastic. I'm just waiting for that to break. So he's gonna go because he's in the way and it just hasn't worked out. But right here on the wall, we're gonna put one, and instead of getting the surface mount, we're gonna get the kind that's recessed into the wall to take even better advantage of our minimal space. So over here on the sink, I've laid out the parts and the, the new dispenser. Now, I bought this off of eBay. No instructions were included in the box, and all we got was the cellophane-wrapped, you know, uh, dispenser, um, a bracket, and the bracket's going to serve to help secure the dispenser, you know, kind of like uh, a, between the sheetrock, a spring, the purpose of which still I have no earthly idea what that's for in this application. No idea and a couple of screws with plastic anchors. So I don't even know why I need the anchors either for the way we're gonna do this. Well, I'm gonna put you on the tripod and I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now, I have never done one of these myself, but that's okay. The essence of DIY is not knowing in advance, but figuring it out as you go. Well, our first step is to figure out where on the wall we wanna mount it. Now, because it's recessed in the wall, You've got to make sure you choose a spot where you don't have a stud, a wooden stud behind it. Now I know I've got a stud right there, and if I go over 16 inches, probably another one right here. Sometimes you can tell by just the sound of tapping, so it sounds hollow here, not so much here. Plus I know that they're 16 inches apart, so if I got one here, I know that this area should work out just fine. So I'm going, then I've got to know what size rectangle or square I want to cut. Again, they didn't, it didn't come with any directions, so I'm making this up as I go. So let's measure here, that's almost five inches, it's about four and seven eighths. And then this way, about the same. So it really is square. You can measure it here on the front too, just to make sure we've got the right dimensions. Almost five, four and three quarters, so about like that. So if I measure five inches, a five inch square, or maybe four and seven eighths, that should fit in just wide. Our total width here is just over six inches. It's like six and an eighth each way. So an opening that's five, in, five inches by five inches should be just about right. So let's take a pencil and we're gonna draw that square on the wall. So this has some measurements on it that we can, we can rely on. So here's five inches. Five inches. Now I'll use the tape measure to double check that. Yeah, so about like that. Now I want to make sure that it's straight and level. So maybe a level would be useful here. So I can get the uh, bubble right in the middle. That should be straight right about there. Lost my other line. So we'll double check that. 
It's about five inches square. Perfect. And there is our, there's our five by five square. So this guy's gonna go right up there. Next, we're gonna cut it out. Gonna use a sheetrock saw. And I'll grab it so it doesn't fall inside the wall irretrievably. All right, let's get him in the trash. Test of fit. Looks good, right? None of my pencil marks or cut lines will be obvious. And actually have a little bit of wiggle room up and down inside the side. So that's pretty good. All right, now you can clean up as you go because that part makes quite a bit of dust or you can wait till the end. I think I'm just gonna wait. So now let's take a look at the setup here with the bracket. I lay out for you right here on top of the toilet. And, and the way it works is, as I see it, We have the two screw holes, the screws go through there, and then into this plate in the back. And as we tighten those screws, it will pull the plate, it'll pull that plate toward the holder, and this will clamp onto the sheetrock on both the left and the right side of the, of the toilet paper holder and keep it secure in the okay, wall. I just had a brainstorm and realized what that spring is probably for. With the spring, I am able to hold in place the bracket inside the wall, more or less where it needs to go, so that the screw holes will be aligned when I go ahead and set this up in place, or at least that's what the hope is, right? So that, that's the value of the spring. Once it's secured and up in place, that spring's not really going to do anything. But its value is during assembly, holding that bracket in the wall where it needs to go. So well, that's a pretty nifty trick, and I'm glad I figured that out. So now I should be able to get the uh, toilet paper holder up in place. Okay, so. See if we can get this up. Now, as I mentioned, I wanted to go the extra mile and use a little sealant. And I'm using just construction adhesive. It comes in a tube. Like that. So, now let's see if I can get these screws to start in that bracket. There's one. I think that's it. So as I tighten these screws down, it pulls that bracket and the toilet paper holder tight together to clamp onto the wall. Want to make sure I'm straight before I completely tighten it down and we're done with it. 
not level yet. That's a little better. I don't have a huge level of confidence in this bracket and these screws, which is why I also wanted to go ahead and do some of that construction adhesive. But I think that's about it. So what's left? Well, the only thing remaining is to decide whether the paper should come over the top or from under the bottom. But I guess that's just going to be a matter of personal preference. And that's all there is to it. Our toilet paper holder is installed. I might need to clean up the wall just a little bit and certainly get the vacuum and suck up the dust that I made from sawing. But our project's done. And that really wasn't so hard. I thank you for joining me on this project with Fix This House. Please give me a thumbs up. If you like the video, subscribe to our channel. and I'd love to interact with you with your comments and questions in the discussion below. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.